another one of those days when you drag your chair a little closer. We're going to set the exhaust valve timing on this uh, McCormick Deering made by International Harvester. It's a Type M. One and a half horsepower it is. And we're going to set the exhaust valve timing. Uh, let's begin with the ignition mark. That's it right there. That little, that that uh, chisel mark in that flywheel where that IGN is casted in there. That's the ignition timing mark. We're not concerned with that at all at this point. The other mark is exhaust casted in the flywheel. And this particular one has two uh, chisel marks. A deep one and then a little skinny one right beside of it. But it's been marked twice. Uh, and that's factory did that. Uh, that's that's something that left the factory that way. So you know they did do things that you kind of kind of question about. And this particular one here now all of them don't have this, but it's got one, two, three, four little V marks in this direction, going down Yanderway, uh, indicating the direction of the flywheel travel. It's got four little arrowheads going that way. Some of them don't have that. And, and some of them will be marked on the face out here also without this casting here. There's the different different models. They're, but they're all type ends. Uh, McCormick Deer. Or International, according to the way it was uh, uh, the nameplate. Uh-oh, I hear that 6 o'clock. Uh, that's eastbound. That's 6 o'clock. Here in evening time, east coast of Arkansas. The um, exhaust timing, this mark right here, is what we're going to deal with that now. Later on, we will do the ignition timing. Uh, it's quite simple, quite simple. Remember, this is all we're working with. And the way you do that is you turn the flywheel. Turn the flywheel until you get on the compression stroke. The compression stroke will be when you feel resistance on the flywheel as such. Okay, you see right there, That's it's coming up on the compression stroke. When you come right here and the, the, the timing mark is directly straight down, as straight down as you can get it, that is when ignition would take place. Right down here, the timing mark that you're aligning that to is that mark right in yonder on that crankcase. There is a casted, it's casted in there when this engine was made new. Uh, it can't be changed. It's a casting uh, notch in that in that engine base down there. That's actually straight down in a center line on this crankshaft. It's straight down. If you uh, if you're doing the math on it, that's that's the mark that we're lining this up with. And visual is uh, is good enough. But that would come straight out, and you'd line that up where this mark was in direct relationship to that mark. That's ignition. Okay, to find the exhaust timing mark is you turn it one complete revolution past compression, which one revolution will be all the way around to where that the exhaust lines up in that position. This mark right here is in the bottom most position of that travel. Line it up with that mark in there, uh, right there. Okay, now to set the timing, and 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 once you line those two up, then you do not turn the flywheel anymore. We're done with that. To to the next step is 
let's uh well maybe we can see it maybe we can get a visual on this this cinch nut right back here that fits in this 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 uh exhaust valve push rod right here fits in that yoke part and this is threaded got a nut there and that's the adjustment on this arm here now we've already we we have already uh, fixed our return spring collar and since put it in the correct position. The uh, let's move to the front of the engine now, keeping in mind that we're not going to move the flywheel. Okay, now now the flywheel's in the same place. We just moved up here, and you can see right here, I've got quite a gap right here. This this. Uh, this adjustment screw and the lock nut here is um, it's adjusted toward the front meaning it's as short as it can get so that it will have more travel to go to adjust it in the future if need be and also the, the reason that I said it that way is I wanted the rocker arm to be in as near a straight a position in relationship to the engine as I can get. Now I could shorten up this rod here and then run this screw way out and it would put that in a different position but it's just not right. This this should be in a as near level position to the engine as can be and you can you can achieve that with the adjustment that we're going to do. This, this, uh, just don't, 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 don't be, uh, unless you have, that's too long, don't fool with that, just leave that up there where it's at. And the measurement that we are dealing with now is this gap right here. And the way you do that, you turn the push rod in the direction to make that gap get smaller. Okay, when that comes up there and makes contact, no need to get the feeler gauge out there unless you're just one of those that has to have it, you know. Uh, if, it's, if it's required in your world, you get the feeler gauge out and give that about a thousandth of an inch. If not, just look through yonder. And when you can see daylight through there, when you can see, when you can see a measurement, well, you can see a measurement through there. It's good. So I put that right there like that right there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right in Yanner. And uh, let's see what that is. That's a 9 16. That, 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 that the, the, the nut that I'm going for is right Yanner. You see that nut right there? Okay, now's the time to lock that up. It's nine sixteenths, and I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold it right up here. This little thing here, I'm gonna hold that, put the wrench on there, and I want to tighten that up and not let it turn the push rod. Okay, tighten it up good, cause that's where it's gonna be at. Okay. Okay, that's pretty good. That's real good. Now we got that tight. The flywheel's in the same position. This is in the same position. Now let's come back to this push, this adjustment right here. And and the the adjustment we're concerned with is is this. You you see how much that moves. And actually, you can change the temperature of the way the engine runs by this measurement right here. So what I'm going to do is to come over here on this cinch up bolt right here and make a little, little minor adjustment. Just very little. I only turned that about, uh, maybe a quarter turn. And this this one right here, when you tighten this up, B 
be cautioned with, with tightening this nut up because that is a weak point on that rocker arm right there. And I have seen it, actually I've done it myself, tighten this up too tight and break. I have actually did that, broke a rocker arm myself. I'm just throwing it in there as a caution. But at this point we have the exhaust push rod, exhaust valve adjusted. And I will show you this distance right here by turning the flywheel. Now I'm going to go out and I'm going to, I'm, all I'm doing is moving around here and turn the flywheel a turn. See that rod coming away from that? Okay, when you come back up, you come up, it will hit that and open that. See it open the valve? Okay, and then it comes back around. But that's all they are to adjusting the exhaust valve on a Type M uh, McCormick Deer. And uh, we'll give her, we'll give her, a, we'll work her again there. And and with the spring, it holds uh, your, your your rocker arm with that spring on there. Your, your, your rocker arm is just not flapping around in the wind, you know. But uh, well, let's get on to something else now. From here on the East Coast, Arkansas, Shop Dog Sam.